In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a confidence interval around a sample proportion. Basically, a sample proportion is computed by taking the frequency for a given uh, outcome or a target outcome and dividing it by the total sample size. So for instance, I have a variable here. It's a categorical variable. Basically, it's a binary variable because uh, that's what we're going to need in order to calculate our proportion. And we have values of 0 and values of 1. And uh, this particular variable right here reflects an individual's intention to vote in an upcoming election. So a code of 0 is reflecting a lack of intention or an, an intention not to vote, whereas a value of 1 is reflecting an intention to vote. So we can calculate uh, the proportion of individuals in this data set who express an intention to vote by taking the frequency of the yeses and dividing it by the total sample size. So that would get us the proportion. Um, in addition, we may wish to form a confidence interval around that proportion. And so I'm going to show you how to do uh, both in one swoop. So to do this in SPSS, we're going to go to Analyze. We'll go down to Nonparametric Tests. Go down to Legacy, uh, excuse me, to One Sample, excuse me. And uh, right here, you'll notice that it says automatically compare observed data to hypothesized. So that's the option that we're going to stick with. I'm going to go under fields and uh, actually I'm going to move this variable out of the way because the test field is the variable that we want to work from. So this is the intention to vote variable. Under uh, settings, I'm going to click on customize tests and then click on compare observed binary probability to hypothesized um, and it's a binomial test. I'm not really so much interested in carrying out a binomial test as I am in just forming a confidence interval, but this is a, a quick and easy route to uh, obtaining the confidence interval. Under test options, I can determine what kind of confidence interval I want to have by uh, changing the value right here. So right now, it's the default is 95%. I could change it to 96 or 97, 98, 99. Uh, and so forth uh, easily just by changing the confidence interval um, uh, using this little toggle right here. So I'm going to go back to choose tests and under options um, I'm not so again I'm not so much interested in this particular issue right here so I'm just going to leave this alone but I am going to click on the Clopper Pearson exact so um, and in this particular case this is going to generate the confidence interval now, I need to generate a confidence interval around individual values for um, our indi the proportion of either no's or yeses. So what I want to do is go down to specify success values. And because I want to generate a um, confidence interval around the proportion of yeses, which are coded 1, what I'll do is I'll go to value and I'll type in 1 and then enter. And so there you go. So now we can generate a confidence interval around the proportion of yeses on the intention to vote variable. So next, when I click on OK and then click on Run, uh, you'll see I get this output. And right now, like I said, this is irrelevant to what I'm really trying to do. Really what I'm trying to do is to look at the confidence interval. And I can get there by double clicking on this output. And then down at the bottom where it says View, uh, right now it's under a hypothesis summary view and that's actually testing the difference between the proportion observed in the sample and that hypothesized proportion of 0.5 but again that's not what I'm interested in. I'm going to click on this little button down here and then you, you'll see a little drop down and the drop down if I can kind of uh, minimize this just a whisper here so that you can see it the drop down looks like this and I will click on confidence interval summary view so I'll click on that, and so now you can see that the proportion of yeses in my sample was 0.438. So 43.8% of the sample indicated an intention to vote. The 95% confidence interval ranged from a low of 0.198 to a high of 0.701. So that's my interval estimate um, of the population proportion. So that's essentially how that works. Similarly, I could form a confidence interval around the nose if I wanted to. Um, so let's just do that really quickly. So I'll go down to nine parametrics, one sample. Under options, I can change this, and I'll just change it to a zero, and uh, then OK. And then 
click on OK, and then run. And so again, we, we get our uh, same little issue as we had before. But in this case, I'll go down to View and uh, click on Confidence Interval Summary View. And so now you can see the proportion is 0.562, which is essentially 1 minus the proportion associated with the yeses. And this confidence interval ranges between 0.299 and 0.802. Now it is important to note that this uh, particular um, um, in SPSS, there are actually a couple of views that you can approach to getting the confidence interval uh, output. Um, so if you don't particularly like this particular uh, output uh, or uh, uh, summary of the information, you can actually go to edit, go to um, options, and under options you can click on output. And you can see right now that the, the current uh, display method is model viewer. And if you want more of a regular um, um, tables and charts that we typically see in SPSS, we can click on this button right here. So let me just do that just to demonstrate what I'm talking about. So I'm going to click on it, click on OK, and now rerun it uh, with, again, nose as being the, the target group. So I'm going to go to non-parametrics, one sample. We'll leave everything as it was before, uh, and then click on run. And so now you can see the difference. So now we have the um, confidence interval summary. There's our proportion of no's in our sample. Uh, and then this is the interval estimate that we found previously. So you can kind of make a decision as to which approach uh, you prefer. Um, some folks might prefer this approach because it looks more in line with the conventional uh, ways in which SPSS uh, presents um, the uh, output. Just as another example, let's say that I want to change my confidence interval and have it uh, a little bit wider. So let's say instead of a 95% confidence interval, I want to rate, uh, increase it to 99%. So I'll rerun it using the 99% confidence interval. And you can see right here it says confidence interval 99%, and there's the lower and upper bound for that confidence interval. The actual point estimate for the proportion of no's is exactly the same as it was before. So that's how you can actually change the, um, the uh, width, or, or at least the proportion associated with the confidence interval, or rather the coverage area for the confidence interval. So uh, note too that uh, you know under this other uh, viewing option, if we scroll down, uh, you can see that there's kind of uh, there are a couple ways in which the information is presented. A lot of people probably are going to be more uh, familiar with this particular presentation. So you can see right here the no's and the yes's, uh, and then the height of the bars are reflecting uh, the frequency counts for each category.